All right, welcome back to the channel. It's been like, what, six weeks, seven weeks since I've done a D4 video, but here we are. And so in this video, I'm hoping to, what? All right, so in this video, we're gonna be finishing off the rebuild on this winch and installing it back onto the tractor. The reason this video is so late, we'll go more into that later, but basically I was waiting for this shaft to get fabricated because the old one, it was, I was not having that. So anyways, let's start with rebuilding the drum and then we'll go from there. I found a company in Portland that actually specializes in winches and I talked to a guy that knows, he knew a lot about a lot of winches, forget the company name. Anyways, I was asking him if you could repair this. He said you can, but he wouldn't touch it because it's cast and no one wants to, to play around with it. He, there's, he said there's, you're not gonna find a replacement spool. You'd, you could find another winch and take the spool out, but that just seems like a waste. So this is, it's really not a, a structural issue. Um, it's really just more of a cosmetic issue. So. I'll just fix it the best I can and, and that'll be good. So this is the good side that we're looking at and you can see how the casting is. It's, uh, you have these spokes which are thick and they come out and then there's a thick piece of steel, well it's cast steel, around and then the rest of it is pretty thin metal. This is maybe, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. So let's look at the other side though. It's a little bit different. Okay, so here's the bad side and you can see on this side we have four spokes. Fortunately, the spokes are in place, and that's good because the, the spokes are what provide all of the strength to keep the cable from coming up and falling back over, which would be a catastrophic failure. However, you can see that this, this is about a half inch by maybe half inch line is cracked off right here, and then the skin's folded back in pretty much on all three sides except for this one. I'm just gonna run the grinder right here and we'll look at the sparks and that'll kind of hopefully tell us what kind of steel this is. All right, here's some uh, low carbon steel that I know is low carbon for a comparison. Now I am no expert by any means, but to me that looks like it's a medium carbon content. Not high carbon, not low carbon for sure. It's, so it's a little bit more challenging to weld, not, not uh, impossible. So I think the way to fix this is going to be to pull the skin back at, down to clear room and then run some steel here, weld it in all the way around and then fold the skin back and tack the skin back to this new steel. So also to note is it's exactly seven inches from the shaft out on all these spokes. And the shaft is two and a quarter. So that's 16 and a quarter diameter that we have to deal with. Now over here, I've put this side back on just so I know what width I can deal with before it starts scraping. So to me, it looks like about 17 and a quarter. And I, I don't want to go anything above 17 and a quarter as far as how wide this thing is. Three eighths, three eighths by three eighths. It's about the right size. Now the only challenging part about this is going to be the actual welding. So I did a lot of research and I ended up with this. These are 312 stainless. So I'm going to be using a stick welder to weld this in. And stainless is, this, this is very, very forgiving on cast steel stuff. So this should work. We'll, we'll give it a shot. I do actually have flex core stainless wire for this welder but this is only a 60 amp welder and i've tried it before and it just does not have enough juice for the stainless Stuff heats up fast. You can see it's cracking here, but there's like another support here. This is like probably part of the old one that broke off. So it, it's, it, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. So 
so he's seven and a half. Probably char this edge a little bit. Nice. Still can't find my uh, ball peen hammer here, so I'll be slumming it. Well, it's not perfectly round, but it's pretty good. I think it's good enough. This is obviously a one time use thing, which is fine. It's better than wasting a big piece of steel. Now, I've been grinding on here for a while now, and I think this is actually lower carbon steel than I originally thought, which is a good thing. Okay, took a fair amount of shaping and bending and cutting, but I think that's good enough. So that's ready to weld. Charlie, go on. No, 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 hot. Nope, hot, hot. Gotta wait till Charlie leaves, otherwise she's gonna look at the spark here. Okay, well, it's welded. Let's see. The thing I'm most worried about it is this thing hardening up and shattering. So let's see here. Okay. It is making easy punches on there, so. Yep. Okay, well that's promising. By the way, I'm doing this outside because I'm using stainless rod and I'm pretty sure that stainless is really bad for you gives off a lot of fumes when you weld with it, so. All right, last section. These uh, stainless welding rods are working, in my opinion, very well. They're very forgiving. I'm not much of a welder, but I think this is a pretty good starting spot. I mean, you can tell kind of I welded there, there. <clears throat> but I did, this one was a, a little bit bowed up, so I took the old hammer here, and I was, I was hitting on it pretty good. Nothing's cracked. I kind of tapped on all of these, so nothing's cracked. Everything's still really pliable as it was before. Nothing's hardened up like I, I did with the center punch. So I think I'm home free. This uh, stainless stick was, was uh, very helpful for a novice like me. This thing's quite heavy, by the way. I'm on the first side here. So this is, 
I haven't modified this part at all, this part. It just, it's contacting on both sides, but you have to remember that there is, this is uh, angled in here and then there's like a lip right here. So, and I know for a fact, I look back at the video, this part was not touching. So this is gonna be the baseline here where if it's this tight right here, then I know I'm okay. So I'm gonna mark it here and then we'll keep rotating it. All right, well, it's actually looking pretty good. This side is not causing any issues. There's really just a couple spots on this other side, like here, where it's, it's, it's been smashed and sticking in, and like here. And I think these ridges run underneath. This is pretty thin right here, and it's angled in. So I'm gonna grind those down and then call that good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this. So I'm gonna, you know, we'll work on that next. All right, here's the deal. I've been measuring across this thing and I found in this spot between these two marks here, it's 17 and a half inches across where everywhere else is like 17 and uh, an eighth under a half. What is that? 17 and three eighths. So it, this, it's because it's, this is all smashed in right here. It's pushed it in. I really want to fix this. I don't want to bend it though. This is really, really thick all the way through. I just don't want to heat this up. I just, it's kind of scary to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and grind off, uh, you know, an eighth of an inch. All right, for this part, I'm definitely going to need my ball peen hammer. So let me go find it. One of my kids has stolen it. So I know what you're thinking. I know someone's gonna ask this. Why didn't I just go and find another winch where I bought that engine and pull the drum out? And to me, that just seems unethical. It's like killing a shark just to get its fin. I mean, if I, if I grab another winch and just to get the drum out, then there's another winch with no drum that someone else might find one day and need. So I think this is a better way to go. Okay, back to the stick welder. So I've gone down to a 332nd stainless rod before I was using a 1 8 and that's because we're doing a lot thinner metal here. And I'm basically just gonna come along and just try to fuse where I can. I should probably actually clean this up first a little bit more with a grinder before I do this, which I will. I jump down on the amps, obviously, and uh, yeah, this should be pretty straightforward. It's the same exact material as before. Okay, time for a lot of grinding. And uh, you know, I just upgraded my GoPro halfway through this video. It's pretty dark out here, but this thing is showing, is pretty light on the screen. Had to upgrade the grinder, it was taking forever otherwise. Well, I've done a lot of welding on this thing, a lot of passes. Just to give you an idea, <laughs> done a lot of welding. So I really built up the material here. Um, it was pretty thin in some areas, just from rust or you know being worn away. So I built it way up, and then you can see here I've coated everything uh, with a layer of epoxy, and I'm really using that kind of like just body filler. So there was, you know, it wasn't perfectly smooth. I'd like it to be smooth, so it's like the rest of the casting. So I'm just filling this in and I'm just gonna sand it down and you know hopefully hide 
as much as possible that I repaired this. Uh, structurally, like I said, it's, it's going to be in great condition with all that weld on there, a lot of material on there. And this is just a final cosmetic step. Go on, Doc. Good enough. Put some primer over it. Oh, it's windy out here. All right, you can see it ain't pretty, but uh, it's a lot, a lot better than it was. And um, you know, it's structurally it's going to be fine. And of course, this side that I didn't fix, it looks is going to draw your eye away way before any of these repairs do. Now I know this side is not super heavy. Just want to make sure the winch isn't going to fall off. Kind of forgot about this thing, but I should probably take a look at it. So this is the uh, this is the selector for the winch. It's basically you know neutral, forward or reverse. We got the same kind of. I mean, the, whoever is doing the stick welding. It's just really rusty, so this looks just, you know, take it apart and uh, clean it up and put it back together. Safety wired. That's nice. Can someone explain the safety wire to me? There's one bolt and it just runs around this, which this is supposed to move. I mean, you don't want a moving object on safety wire. It's going to just wear through. Oh, yeah, it's going to do that. That's, that's the problem. Like a three-year-old did this. I mean, what has happened here? There's like some set screws in there, but they just welded the whole thing over. Did this fall off once and they just welded it back together so it never would fall off again? I don't, I don't think I can take this apart. This thing is supposed to pop up and down. I think there's supposed to be a spring in here. You know, like it, it's supposed to, yeah. Now oh, this is like finger tight, of course. Good thing that safety wire was on there, otherwise it would come loose. Well, at least this isn't locked up. So this thing actually, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but right here, it's doing that. This side's straight. Yeah, there's like, quarter of an inch of contact. Yeah, it's not going to take much. Big mystery solved. So if you remember on the first video, I took the case apart and I found a Woodruff key sitting on the bottom and I didn't know what it was for. Well, when I took this shaft apart, there was only one Woodruff key on this side. There was none over here. And wouldn't you know it, it's the same one. Oh, wait. Look at that. So this covers at the very top of the case and it was completely coated in really grainy rust. So obviously what's happening is condensation forms and it sits at the top of this case and it rusts it out and then all the little rust particles drop down into the gearbox. Got this stuff all cleaned up here. I'm not even gonna attempt to do that, but the rest of the shaft is cleaned up. One thing I noticed is this lock screw. It's an interesting way to do it. They got like a dimple in it and then there's a corresponding dimple there. I thought originally that someone had broken a lock screw off in there, but it's, there's not a lot of contact here. So this sits on the shifter for the transmission, and then this is the winch, and I believe a pin sit, sits through here. This was not on here originally. It had broken off or whatever, and the pin's supposed to ride in here. If there's a spring there, then you can you know push it down to change it and then it should pop back out. Whoever made this, I mean, this 
is interesting. And there's like, I mean, this looks like an oopsie right here. I don't know why they would do that. Here's the top lid to this thing. This was completely covered in rust, and this was probably what was dropping rust on everything. I was looking through the manual trying to figure out why this shaft, this whole assembly is also hacked up. This is how it's supposed to look originally. There's supposed to be a bend in the shaft. And then they clearly cut this and added this extension on. I, I think that's what this is this, with this really bad welding. So what I, what I think is going on is if you've been watching this from the beginning, I found out pretty early on that this gear shift and the clutch levers are not original. They've been upgraded with uh, later machine levers. So I'm pretty sure what happened is they had the winch on here and they had to modify all the bracketry to fit with a newer style. So I bet you the newer style would probably be a D4N winch and they had the original D4 winch. So that's my guess is they just had to modify it to get around that stuff. I'm just going to let well enough alone. I did get a new spring for this, for this thing. I'm going to have to shorten it some and then I'll get a pin so it actually sticks in a kind of like a, the detent properly. I am going to grind this all down too, not really for cosmetic reasons, but I know it, these, these are so sharp. I'm going to reach under the seat at some point and open a finger up. There's going to be so much red on yellow that you think this thing was sponsored by McDonald's. I'm going to cut that down some more. I, in my day, I've seen bronze shift forks before in transmissions, and I've seen steel shift forks with bronze teeth where they grip the gears, but I've never seen a bronze shift fork with steel teeth. It makes no sense to me. Maybe there's a reason for it. If you know, let me know. But, so I'm, I'm assuming this hole is for the safety wire on this pin. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started because I'm guessing once it's in here, it's going to be kind of hard to... This is actual safety wire, by the way. I'm not skimping. I got the key installed on this side. I'm going to hammer this in, this key in after just because so I don't have to pass through all the way through this the keyhole on here. I'm guessing the reason this one was missing is they didn't they forgot about it or they dropped it in. Probably, probably did that wrong. Please forgive me if you're watching this. I am not an expert. But basic principle is if this starts trying to loosen, it'll pull on here. I think that looks right to me. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't, if this was an airplane, I wouldn't fly in it, but. That's pretty much it for this. The only other thing that's bothering me is this shaft outlet right here. So this is, I looked at some pictures. This is outside of the, where the seat is. It's not covered and it's not, I mean, it's, it, it's not loose in here, but I mean, water could get in there. I put some grease in there. So I might put like a little cap over this. Which way does this come out? I was just cleaning this thing and look at this complete void in the casting here. Been noticing that a lot on this winch, there's a just really poor casting quality in certain areas. 
I haven't seen anything like that on the cat stuff, so it must just be a heister thing. They weren't, weren't very good on the casting. This is a 1 8 inch thick gasket. It's very hard to work with. So this is the cover for the brake area. It doesn't get any oil or grease on it. You could probably get away with just painting the whole thing instead of masking it like I've done, but This goes on. Only other thing to point out is this shaft, since it's so sloppy, it's going to allow water in. Um, fortunately, this is the brake container, it does have a drain at the bottom. But uh, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Scratched up that cover when I was test fitting the other side. That's all right. So I'm pretty sure I need to put this cover on before I put the side plate on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this bearing cone in. And I'll, let, me, let me show you the bearings I got. So these are the two old bearing and cones over here. And if you remember, I think like this one, you can see it's just completely shot in there. And then this one I just replaced just because I found it for not too much money. So here's a new one here. It needs to be cleaned up, but it's, it's actually, it's in good condition. This one's in an original Caterpillar box, which is ironic because this is not a Caterpillar part but uh, it's, the, it's the same trade number on the bearing. Very, very old. This thing's falling apart. So I'm gonna clean these up. And then for the two cups, this is a genuine Timken. This is back when it was still made in the USA. And then this is, unfortunately, the guy had Koyo and Timken bearings. He sent me a Koyo bearing. So this is a made in Japan one. It's the same size, but Unfortunately, I didn't get that. It's the only part, the only bearing in this entire thing that's not going to be Timken when I'm done. Now, I remember when I took this apart, both of these top cups were, in my opinion, way, and I can, you can even see it here, they're way, way too loose in here. So I'm going to go ahead and use some retaining compound. This is just Loctite 680. It's meant for this. Yeah, this is just like... Where's my mouth? It's way too easy to get in there. Just as a reminder, every gasket I took off of this thing was extremely thin, like those little paper gaskets, so I got no problem using silicone here uh, and, and you know not worrying about clearances or preload or anything like that. These are fine threaded bolts that are all throughout this case, which is completely different from how CAT does it. Uh, they use coarse threaded in their cases, which is probably the correct way to do it, but Heister did not do it that way. I think this is right. We'll do one more review at the end here. I don't know. That that should be fine. There is also Loctite in there, obviously, but you know, I just like to, to be thorough.
I'm gonna spray some lube in here since I've been spraying brake, brake cleaner in. Some more uh, interesting heister casting here. Nice little holes. That's, that's original holes in the casting, that's not from anything else. That's not right. Okay, so this, this must be the ceiling surface. Yeah. I can see where the ceiling lip has run. It's right here. It's not worn down. I'm gonna guess this direction, but we'll find out here in a second. Oh, we've got a little bit of a problem here. So basically this shaft is just spinning inside of this outside spacer which acts as the ceiling surface so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this back off and i'm going to i'm just marking right here where the spacer is and then i'm going to put some bearing retaining compound in like so oh. it's already working i didn't mean to do that but I'll let this dry overnight. Well, it's the next day. It spins in that seal, but also I'm an idiot because it does not matter at all. Now, on the, right on the other side of the spacer is a bearing. So there's a, the bearing, this spacer, and then right up against this is this thing right here. So, and then you, the, the spindle goes through here and you have the nut on it, it sandwiches the whole thing together. So just that pressure is gonna hold the spacer in place. I should have thought about that more before I was stressing out about it. So the spacer is obviously intentionally loose so it slides on and off easily. Um, and it doesn't matter because it's all sandwiched together. I should have, I don't know what I was thinking last night. There is also a thread locker in there, of course, so. There also is thread locker in there. But if you wanna make a comment or advice on safety wire, I'd love to hear it, let me know. looks a little precarious from you watching at home I can assure you that it is this thing together these two pieces probably weigh I don't know maybe 250 probably about 250 pounds uh, what is that in metric I think that's about four kilometers so it's gonna be a little bit hard I need to get it up and rotated Where are you going? <clears throat> okay, well that wasn't going to happen. So this is uh, attempt number two. We'll try it this way. Okay, she's on, bolt holes lined up. This thing was very difficult to get on there. Down here, it's actually looking pretty good, the gap there. So these are 5 8 fine bolts, which my chart says to torque to 180, which I am not gonna do since this is a cast housing. Perfect. 
It ain't easy to move this thing around. All right, nice and easy. Oh, nice and easy. It's going to want to lift off here. Easy now. That's a huge relief. I almost had a heart attack because it kind of fell over there. I mean, it wasn't really that bad, but I, I looked in here and I see all these ball bearings and I'm like, oh no. But they're, uh, I'm pretty sure they're the little ball bearings that are inside these casters here. I mean, I knew it was gonna fall. It's just, you know, I'm one guy out here. There's not much I can do about that. But nice little bit of a gap there. I was aiming for about a 16th to an eighth and it's kind of wavering in between there. This side, which I didn't really touch, is also is quite tight, but it looks okay. All right, I got a new seal here. Looks like it's been sitting on a shelf for a few years. Good condition though. Apparently this doesn't seat flush. You can see it on here too. For the bull gear, pretty heavy. Okay. See if we're close enough to draw it in. Oh, thank goodness. You're supposed to put a gasket here, I think. I guess to prevent fluid from coming. Now I'm gonna let this tack up and then I'll torque it down once it... All right, let's fix this drain plug. Watch this snap off in here. I'm gonna use red on this one for obvious reasons. Got some uh, rare earth magnets here. They come pre-drilled. It's in there. It's a nice long length of magnet. <laughs> wow, there's a there's a good four inches of clearance between a gear, so don't have to worry about that hitting. Oh, there we go. All right, great news for this video. The shaft that I've been waiting on is in the mail right now. <clears throat> so I'm still trying to plug along and I'd like to get this thing back on the machine. I can finish assembly once it's on there. I think I have everything together that needs to be there. I'm just gonna verify that I can still spin this drum. I mean, it's pretty tight by hand. Uh, I can't really get it. I'm gonna try to bar over on the, the big bowl gear and see if I can get it to turn without too much effort. Oh, yeah. That spins easy. Okay, 
Okay, so now for the brakes. These are all the old pins. They're all pretty much just shot out. So I got some new ones on McMaster and I matched them up as close as I could. So for like the diameters are all the same. This one's got like a cotter pin hole somewhere else. These are the little rollers for the brake. So they're the same diameter, but this like the old one's a little bit bigger. It shouldn't matter. New bushings, these are all just standard. I think these are half inch. These are Olight bushings I got. The only thing I have to do, so on these three rods here, these two short ones, they have a thread on there so you can pull them out when, you're, when you want to replace them. And these are actually hardened and I cannot drill those in here and I could not find similar ones. But these I was able to pull out. Um, you, could, you can put a vice grip in here and pull them out uh, when, if they're in the machine. This one, this is the longer one. It also has that drill hole. And this one I'm gonna have to cut down. This is also hardened. Um, and then I'm gonna try to put something on here so I can eventually pull it out if I need to. And then this shaft is supposed to go through like that. And when you wanna go and pull this shaft, there's nothing to grab onto in here. So you're supposed to take a 3 8 bolt, thread it in and pull it out. Now, if I do that with this shaft, there's no way to get the shaft out. And if, you know, once it gets old and it's been sitting in here and it gets rusty, then you're in trouble. I took the piece I cut off as a test piece and I ran it across the grinder for a while to remove the hardening. I mean, it's gonna just remove a little bit of hardening, obviously. And then I welded in a nut on top. I tacked it on with the stick welder, which was not easy to do because I don't have any small sticks. So now let's screw this in and see if it's gonna be strong enough. It's still hot, that's why I have this. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. All right, here's the process. So I'm gonna grind on this for a while to remove the hardening. It'll just, you'll, it'll start showing up as blue. All right, this is a uh, 6013 rod. It is not pretty. It's basically just hack there, and then there's a little bit more there, but it's, it's on there pretty good. I think it's gonna be fine. Now, I thought me tapping it in maybe deformed the outside of these, but then I pressed the other ones in, and there's the same issue. I think just pressing them in made the hole smaller. So this is showing up as right on 750, next 748. There's these rollers on here. So here's the original pins. They also have just one hole and it goes through. You can see which hole there it ran through. The problem is that both of these are, are bent. These forks are bent outward a little bit. So when you go and you run the pin in, it's kind of just hitting. It doesn't go in all the way. Yep, right there. That was all it needed. Just to, and there is, I mean, there is some movement here. So these pins originally had a little grabber like on here to pull it out. But if you look in here, you could easily get a uh, vice grips in here and grab it and then tap it out. So I'm not really gonna worry about those. remember these having uh, safety wire holes on them, but apparently they did.
If you remember in the first video, pulling this brake drum off of the shaft took basically everything I had. It took a 50 ton press with heat on it to get it off. And it shouldn't be like that in my opinion. It should just be a pretty, you know, just a snug fit, but not tight because it is keyed. This is a keyed shaft. It shouldn't be that hard on there. So looking at this, sure enough, there was a raised, a raised edge here, like something had gotten in and gotten crushed in between. So I've already been kind of sanding it down. I've got some 400 grit here. I'm just gonna smooth it out. And then in my opinion, this should just be, I should be able to just tap it on with a mallet and this should slide right on. I shouldn't need any heat or anything like that special to get it back on. Of course, if this goes in like halfway and gets stuck, then I'm in trouble, but. Yeah, it's going on pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead still and heat this up when I do eventually put it on to like, I just don't wanna smash the bearings in by hitting on it too hard. So I, in my opinion, this thing should just slide right on. Okay, turning our attention to the mounting setup here. Let me just show how this works. So basically, it's the same kind of deal as when this shaft went in. There's this collar here, which is smooth. There's no O-ring and it slides into here. There's no sealer. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing when I, in the second video, when I put this in, I'm just gonna put a ring of <clears throat> silicone around here and our RTV and then let that seal to this. These bolt holes not used. So there's these compartments here, clean this up and then run RTV around these sections and those will hopefully seal those up. I don't want water dripping down and getting in. And then these, originally there was an O-ring and then there was also RTV around it when I pulled it apart. I think I'm just gonna go straight RTV on both of these. Uh, this is a pretty decent flange. Before I do that, you can see I've already done it on this side. I need to run a die over all these mounting studs. I've already replaced the bolts or the uh, nuts over here. These original bolts, the old original nuts were pretty bad. I did try to find new studs, could not find any anywhere. These are three quarter inch, fine on one side, half on the other, or uh, coarse on the other. So this is the shaft coupler that was on it. It looks like this is a pin retainer, but it's, it's in the actual pin hole. There was no pin in it, obviously. Let me uh, see if I can find one around here. Uh, five sixteenths. This entire transmission case is resting on this two by six right now. That's fine, all and good, but once you put that winch on the back, this thing is going to want to flip up. Don't ask me how I know that. So actually what I'm doing here is those boards are just to prevent the transmission case from moving at all when I put that winch in because I do not want it to shift. It's a very delicate operation. Once it's in, this thing's going to want to tilt backwards, so that's what the chain is for. I will remove the wood and then the chain will keep it from flipping back. Hopefully, we'll find out. Well, this is like the second most dangerous thing I'm going to have to do besides the engine. And this is not actually too bad right now. Easy. All right. There's a lot of pitting on the surface, so you know it's going to fill a lot of holes. I also did the seam right here, which is where the case splits. So let's give that a shot. Easy. <laughs> Using a uh, floor jack to level. Not ideal. Pretty well leveled on here. You can see it lines up there. I did make one crucial mistake. 
I can't use this as a chain point because, I mean, that has to do that thing. So I'm gonna have to get it perfectly lined up and then pull that off and hopefully I can get it. I think I can get it started on the studs and then slide it forward. I think I got it on the studs. I'm not sure if the uh, drive shaft is engaged though. Let's see. I'm gonna have to take these chains off now. This is kind of the scary part. Actually, a way better idea. I'll just take these off. The transmission's in neutral, and I think I, I can feel it's, it's engaged. So we're ready to just pop this thing on now. Been dreading doing this all week, so I'm glad it's done. This would have been a lot easier with a friend, but once again, I don't have any friends. I can't believe I overlooked that top plate hitting the chain. I'm honestly a little bit disappointed with myself. That was really dumb. And lower this. Please don't break. Ooh, I can hear that RTV settle. So let's get those top bolts in as soon as possible. I'm gonna replace these bolts later. I just need to get this in as quick as possible here so I can tighten everything. I'm, I'm out here by myself. It's a little bit dangerous to do this. Um, I think the key though is just to maintain discipline. Do not trust anything underneath, anything that's hydraulically controlled. Try to avoid putting my legs or my hands or whatever underneath the winch when it was being held up by those. So once I got it onto the studs, it was a little bit less dangerous. So this is why this video took so long to make. I was waiting for a replacement of this shaft. Now, I barely showed it in the end of the last video, but I kind of alluded that the shaft was pretty much a goner. And, uh, I, you know, originally I just kind of said I would put it back in and let it go. You can see the original bearings. They're like needle style. So some of the, some of the wear on here is like at a weird angle too, which is also bad. After thinking about it for a while, I kind of decided there's no way I wanted to do that. So that shaft rides right in here and it drives that little pinion gear, which drives the drum gear in there. There's a lot of force on there, obviously. So those bearings, the new bearings would probably get chewed up right away. But more importantly, if that fails, there's a huge possibility of breaking the gear, the pinion gear or this big bull gear. And if that happens, then basically this, this winch is scrap metal. So I took the shaft to several machine shops around town and I don't know why they were all kind of turning me down. Either they were quoting me some ridiculous price or they were saying it was gonna take like 10 weeks or they just said no. Um, not sure why. This is hardened because it acts as the inner race for these needle bearings. Uh, maybe that's part of it. So I wasn't, I was kind of stuck at that point. After thinking about it for a few days, I decided I, I could get more quotes if I could go for further shops. So I taught myself how to use CAD. And this actually wasn't too bad. It took me a couple hours to, to figure out how to use it to draw this. This is a program called FreeCAD. It's, it's free. And I got the specs for the actual bearing surface off the Timken website. So like it's 1.5 plus zero minus 1.5 thou. And then um, the, the, that's the hardness spec. So thanks to having these drawings, I was able to send out for more quotes. And I found a guy in California named Nick Collier uh, who agreed to do it. And this is the result. And he basically knocked it out of the park. Every, everything's on spec, uh, matching the original. Looks really good. He had a really hard time with uh, finishing it after hardening it. I think it took him three tries to do. But he did it, very happy with it. He also actually has a YouTube channel and he's gonna release videos of him making it if you're interested. Um, I'll put a link either on the screen or in the description. They fit perfectly. Like I said, I mic'd this out and it's, it's right on spec, dead, dead on. Very, very good. Quick note on these bearings, by the way. So this is the original bearing. It's a free floating, there's needle bearings in here that are in fact falling out or breaking. And uh, it doesn't have an oiling groove in it, but there's an oiling groove in the gear itself. This is the new one, same trade number. I think this is just an updated design. So it has an oiling groove cut in it and it's a caged needle bearing. So they can't move and the bearings are actually quite a bit bigger. I got the shaft ready to go and I've already installed the bearing on this other side. It's gonna be, there we go. Which is right here. And then a bearing, which I'm not sure where that is. Here it is. 
try not to damage the seal of the other end of the shaft. Here we go. Like, yeah, it's like. All right, now for the outer race here. This is when I remember that it was really sloppy, so I'm gonna use some more retaining compound. Okay, well, I've just realized there's no way I can get this gear in here. I thought I could set it in here, but I forgot the shaft sticks out, so. So it was not easy getting that shaft back out, but it did come out. The trick here, though, is you wanna get this gear in, kinda roll it up out of the way, then put that shaft in, and then you can install the shaft that holds this gear in place, so. There it is. Spacer that goes between them. It seems like it fits. Then these bronze bushings go on the outside. There's a little bit of a lip here, so I'm gonna, I'm assuming that was like that before, so I'm gonna flip it like that. All right, so I made a big mistake here. I got the shaft back in, I got the gear in, but the issue is that you can get the gear in rolled up just almost out of the way, but that little tooth is sticking out, so I can't get this outer cup in. So I have two options. One is I can pull the drum gear back out so I can roll this gear up out further, and that's how I took it apart originally. Uh, I guess I just jumped the gun and installing the drum gear all the way. The other option is I can slide the shaft back out this way, which means I'd have to take that cap off, this uh, outer cone here, or this outer cup. I'm a little bit worried about doing that because I did, I did set that with retaining compound. All right, well, that was fun. There is now space to put that cup in. Okay, I just got this gear on. Um, you didn't really miss much. The only issue I had with was on the uh, safety wire for these bolts around this plate. I found that the wire from here to down here, and I actually have a washer on there right now just to, I was, it was kind of seeing how bad it would be. Uh, that wire was rubbing against this gear ever so slightly. So I'm not sure why that is, but anyways, what I did instead is I, I wired these two together. That's why they're twisted versus these down here, which are straight. And then these three I wired together. I've been looking a lot on the specs on safety wire and it says anytime there's a plate where all the bolts are on the same plate and it's a non-critical application, it's fine to do a single wire like this, which is what I'm doing. So, but anytime that there's two or three or one, then I do do the twist. It was about 100 degrees today. It's quite warm and humid in here. So you're gonna be treated to my bare arms. Once again, thank you to Nick for making, doing such a great job on this. Hopefully it fits. Like a glove. Now when I drew this thing in CAD, the most difficult thing was this pin is not centered, uh, the pinhole. It's more on the, the body. So we'll see if he got that right. Oh, it is, it's, it's popping in pretty easy. Let's see if it actually all spins when I, when I turn the input shaft over there. Oh, it's working. Okay, got that cover back on. One thing I did off camera I forgot to film is this, was, this shaft was sticking out maybe five thousandths out and it needs to be flush because it's actually retained by the cover that I'm gonna put on here. So I ground it pretty flat, and uh, I'll show you on the original shaft, the way they handled that was they kind of beveled this area, and it's really rough. You can maybe see, make that out. Uh, so instead of doing that, I bottomed it out all the way and then ground this flash, or flush. Yeah, so this is, this is the part that covers that. Once again, we're using fine threaded fasteners into a cast steel case, which has got to go easy on the torques. 
All right. Now for this. There we go. Jeez. You'll notice that there is not enough space on here to get the handle on. And I'm actually okay with that because I'm not sure how far to put the handle on. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and figure all that out. This is really easy to take off, it's just four bolts. Now for the part I've been dreading since I took it off is putting this big brake drum back on. So hopefully I've cleaned it up enough and uh, let's go ahead and pick it up upstairs. see how hot it is. Yeah, it's about 200 degrees. I didn't want to go hotter because it's painted. Right. It's going on. Nope, that didn't work. Not at all. So I mic'd out the shaft and then I transfer that to this. This is an internal micrometer here. And I've identified a couple spots in this thing. I don't know if this is warped or what happened, but it's, there's a couple spots where it's, it's hanging up. I can tell right here with this thing. It would be really nice to use a hone in here, but you can't with this huge keyway. So uh, I came up with this tool here. I think Snap-on sells these. And then I was running it around in here like this. And I think I got all of the high spots now. It's, it's pretty, uh, you can see it's pretty clean in there. So I'll do a little bit more cleanup with some finer grit. Yeah, this thing should uh, slide on without too much effort now. Got an extra large cotter pin for the drain here. All right, take two. Oh yeah, that's what we want right there. I watched back the old video and I confirmed that this is the right depth. Um, it's, it, it was like that originally and it's centered on these things, which is the important part because this is where the brake shoe rides. So. Okay, I got the cotter pin on this side. I noticed on this side, there wasn't a hole on this bracket. I think I must have gotten these swapped, but there is a hole in the back, so I ran the cotter pin through. I'm not sure if you can see that, but for this side, it's back there. It wasn't a big deal to do. Goes like that. So the reason this is set up like this is depending on how you have all your leverage set up or where the winch is um, pulling on it, you might have to pull or push on it. So either way, it does tighten the drum up. Okay, I got grease on this side and then I'm gonna throw this on and I'm gonna put Permatex 3 on the other side. And that's because this cover has to come off whenever I wanna adjust the brakes or check it for leakage. Finally, it's all back together. I think I'm gonna have to retire this hammer though. I send it west here. I know earlier I was talking about this right here. The shaft has some slop in it. I was worried about water getting in here, but this brake compartment, I'm pretty sure they expected water to get in there. That's why they have the drain hole here. And I mean, you know, it's just like the brakes in your car. Water gets in there, like if you have drum brakes. I did the best I could. I mean, I've coated everything in here with Gliptol so it won't rust. So it should stay fairly clean. The one spot I am concerned about is this shaft hole right here, which this is the control shaft. I think what I'm gonna do, this looks like a three quarter inch. I'm gonna get like a, um, 
you know, like a freeze plug type thing where you can hammer it in with some RTV around it to seal that hole because this will get water. I am not going to put any fluid in this. I haven't put any fluid in the transmission or the finals yet. And the reason for that is the next step is pressure wash and paint. I'm going to be pressure washing this fairly aggressively. So after I'm done, I'm going to open all the drain plugs up, make sure there's no water coming out. So this is going to be a long video. I, I made a big mistake on this video. I should have split it up into two or maybe even three. We'll see how long it is. But, uh, you know, it's been like, what, five, six weeks since I've done a video. And I've been working that entire time. I mean, I... I was, I was kind of adamant about getting everything done in, a thir in the third video, and that was probably my undoing here. So anyways, from now on, it should be a little bit more regular, hopefully. I've been getting a lot of questions from people asking like advice or where I got parts. You know, the best place to ask questions is not in the comments. It's going to be like either send me a message on Instagram or an email, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you that way. But the comments... Like I remember on that direct start video, I had so many people asking me like where I got the starter and, and blah, 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 blah. And eventually I think I just pinned a comment there with all the part numbers. But uh, if you have questions or advice or whatever, or you want to show me what you're working on, just, you know, send me an email or Instagram and, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you. So anyways, guys, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back very soon. Uh, when you're watching this, I'm probably already going to have this out and being pressure washing it, prepping it for paint.